Hey everyone, welcome to another video review. This is the Transformers War for Cybertron Kingdom Leader Class Megatron from Beast Wars. You can see him there, right there is his uh, purple T-Rex mode. We'll put that off to the side right now. And we'll go ahead and look at the box, because that's what we do. You can see, yeah, there's Megatron roaring, you know, Kingdom, Transformers, uh, you know, more generations, Takara Tomy, Hasbro, Megatron, but Beast, but not Beast Wars, Cybertronian. On the side here, you got, well, Megatron shooting at something, probably Primal. You see leader class and more Cybertronian. On the top, you got, uh, of course, the uh, Predacon symbol and some uh, golden disc symbols. On this side, you got the line wide artwork. You know, that's usual stuff on this side. And on the back, or on the bottom here, you have uh, authentic and copyrights and stuff. And on the back, you have, of course, product shots. And unusually lighter than you'd think purple for this. Um, you know, yeah, I think something changed between the renders or and the product or whatever, but in which way I prefer, I'm glad that we got a different shade of purple than this one that, that's on the box. Also some warnings and stuff on the bottom of the box there too. He of course comes with instructions, which, well, all things considered, they are very decent at um, telling what you do. It's just there's a couple steps which are a little annoying and sometimes uh, it's a little frustrating. Plus the card, which this one is Dinobot again. I'm getting a lot of Dinobot cards for this. And of course you peel it away and it shows that he, look, he becomes an Autobot. Or whatever, and yeah, um, Predacon Dinobot becomes an uh, not Autobot. Did I say Autobot? I meant Maximal. Yeah, he becomes a good guy because it's honor. Yep, and of course it's a holographic sticker. Anyway, Megatron. You can see here. Yes, he is his purple dinosaur. Um, somewhat realistic looking, I guess. Although realistic at least by 90 standards you can see also a lot of green on the top and uh kind of pale yellowish uh, brownish color on the bottom he's got white feet <laughs> he's got red eyes no pupils and he's got white teeth picked out um yeah so you also see a lot of um well panel lines and stuff yeah that's the thing about him is uh he's got a lot of panel lines uh in stuff uh, lots of pieces which are fit together weird and quite frankly also he's also made of a rubbery plastic for the most part this most of this is a very rubbery um soft plastic you can see it right there yeah it's a lot of this is that rubbery plastic and some of it's in, uh, in reinforced by harder plastic you can see that but yeah the thing is this makes it so yeah this is part of the reason why he doesn't fit together well because the rubber plastic you know has a tendency to curl and bend in different uh, temperatures and whatnot. So this this causes some weird fit and finish issues, which yeah, you can see that particularly up here on the neck, which I find unfortunate. It doesn't completely hurt it for me, but it is a little annoying that this is the case with this guy. Um, they also, this this thing at the bottom, this is all rubbery plastic and these these like, they're supposed to tab together and they don't leave a big old seam line and there's not much I can do, figure out how to do about it. And also some gapping, but. If it wasn't for the just the, the lots of gaps, he would look a lot better. But as it is, he just has a lot of gapping and whatnot because of the rubbery plastic, which I understand why they did it to a degree, but it's still a little annoying, I guess. But um, yeah, he, the, the thing is, yeah, part of it is just because, well, the texturing on this, they're trying to do that leathery texturing for this to, for the dinosaur mode. So of course they, that's part of the reason. So there's that. It look this this texturing does look good. It's just I'm not sure if it was worth the sacrifice to for the pla the rubbery plastic. But the articulation in this mode, he does have articulation. His head can look up and down quite a bit depending on which joints you want to use. Although that leaves gaps if you use that full thing, but you can do that. You can look down. You can look side to side again. Kind of breaks sculpting. You can open his mouth. And, you know you get that far before you know and it looks good, and then you start opening too much and you know, you're exposing a gap that shouldn't be there. And yeah. Looks a little bad at this point. It does have a port though, which is nice. And he does have a tongue, which is again textured. Um, its arms are on little ball joints. I believe they're ball joints. Yeah, ball joints, so they can go up and down. They go out a little bit. Little tiny arms. His hips can. It's a weird system here in his hips, but they can go forward and back. There's a. It's like a little rail thing, so it's a little bit of a weird system. And it's hard to get used to. But yeah, it's, you got that. They got forward and back. Outward is not really a thing here, unfortunately. But he does have uh, knees, and there is a swivel there as well above the knee. You got about that much range. And then the, the feet, you got range that far and forward and back. And there is actually tilt 
Although it does get limited depending on what position the foot is in. It does have tilt though. That's nice. And the tail. Tail's out of position right now. That's what's going on. I think, yeah, things came untabbed. That's the other problem is um, some stuff comes untabbed really easily. Particularly up back here. I've discovered that. Let me fix that real quick. There we go. Yeah, if the, the the little hips on the rails gets even a little bit out of alignment with stuff, things get start getting weird. Sucks. The tail here though can uh, switch back and forth here, can switch back and forth here. I guess you can kind of rotate that. That doesn't really help anything, but you can do that. There's no up, not a whole lot of up and down. What little there is isn't very helpful in my opinion. So yeah, you got posability, but some of it's kind of hampered just by his materials and stuff. And just, yeah, it will start looking bad just because of how he's um, made. And this thing likes to come off untab really easily if you start moving the hips too much. That's a bit unfortunate. Um, comparisons though, in this mode here, he's with uh, Optimus Primal, the Kingdom version. See, height difference. Probably the size difference, which makes sense. That's how it was in the show. Megatron was like the biggest guy in the show. And here he is with the original 96 release of uh, Megatron, which is being reissued. Huh. So you can have them really stand side by side if you want. You can see, yeah, they're roughly the same size, although, you know, somewhat different proportions. He's got a huge head compared to him. Yeah, we're roughly the same size. Give or take a little bit. I think this one might be a tiny bit taller. I'll see the tendency to want to... Yeah. There's something hanging off of that. I don't know what that is. Yeah. You can see that. Yeah, they kind of generally got the color scheme. This one actually somewhat more cohesive uh, overall shell. Yeah. And that's it for comparisons. So I'll go ahead and uh, transform him to robot mode, which again, there's a couple weird things here, um, mostly because of the material. But yeah, first thing you want to do is actually lift these uh, hip pieces up like that. You want to lift these uh, up like this and go ahead and then on the rail thing, you want to move that forward while rotating it like that. And do the same thing here, move that forward, rotate it like that. On the actual legs, you want to take this piece, you want to unpeg it from the side, rotate it up and re-peg it in up this, on this hole. Those are those little weird hip missile things. This will do the same thing on this side. Do that, rotate that up and uh, peg it in. So take the tail here, you want to rotate that 180 down like that and just kind of leave it that for, like that for now. Then up here, you want to go ahead and untab this if it hasn't come or untabbed already and untab this from the hips and uh, move this up. There's a little thing right here, accordion over and these little things right here, this will um, clip into this little uh, thing right here. Kind of clip in right there like that and just kind of leave it like that. And the legs here, you want to go ahead and, you know, move them back like this and straighten them out. And then you want to go ahead and uh, untab this, the hips from the main body like this. And then you can take the, each leg and bring them closer to each other. That you know, kind of easiest to do it like this and bring them out and then bring it in like that. So you yeah, just bring it out to pop it out of position and then bring it back in. This part's a little tough just because it, fight you pretty hard. That's probably the single uh, stiffest part on the whole thing. And from there, what you want to do is kind of get this, like this thing, you want to go ahead and uh, move that up and out of the way a little bit, get the, get that all the way. So you can then come down here and uh, untab these from each other. And they also tab in back here, not super well, but they do tab in back there technically. You want to open this up as much as you can so you can then fold this in and Fold that in right there. This this piece folds in. And you can go ahead and then fold this in. Fold this in as well. This it's it's, it's on like a weird hinge. Like see it angles. So yeah, you want to fold it in like that, so it angles outward. And then you can take this piece right here, rotate it. The chest you want to take that and rotate it and try to clear the rubber pieces as much as you can. Rotate that that rotate that. Flip the head out until it clicks into place. Move the camera up a bit. Yeah, he's going to get put tall. Okay. 
because the lower body is pretty much done at this point. Yeah, you bring that down and clip that over top the waist, like there. Like that. And again, make sure this stuff is uh, out of the way back here. He does have a significant backpack, but that's because he's kind of kind of supposed to. Yeah, so get that stuff out of the way. And make sure that's flipped up so you can then come back here, take the dinosaur arms and just move them inside like that. And then you can flip this down over top like that. It's pretty much a backpack taken care of and you're kind of on the last step. What you do here is then to take this and uh, extend that down and rotate this around like that. So, and then this part right here is the probably the most complicated part. Um, take this, rotate this around 180 like that. Then here, what you want to do, is you want to untab these things from the, the this part. You can go ahead and move this thing down. That's his little pincher thing right there. Then you take these and just fold them around. And sometimes the rubber pieces get rubbery pieces get caught on the, in themselves. So just watch it because you're supposed to fully flip them around. And again, you see that's getting caught. Yeah, you're supposed to flip it around all the way. And it's a little scary how uh, much sometimes you have to push things past one another. It's how it just gets really caught. But yeah, you want to do that. And do the same thing on this side as well. Just flip it around. Again, yeah, the rubbery place pieces, and I think, again, because of uh, temperature changes and whatnot, these studio lights are not exactly cold, to say the least. Yeah, you just kind of flip that around. Normally, that's not that hard, and then adjust everything. And you get them standing, and there you go. Um, there's Megatron in his robot mode. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good robot. It's definitely somewhat good looking robot, and it's also, you know, pretty accurate to the old Beast Wars cartoon. Not super, super accurate. I mean, the purples are technically wrong. Like, yeah, you, th these purples here are supposed to be some of the different shade of purple and whatnot, but the color scheme is mostly on the correct side of things. You know, he's got that more detailing. He's got these, like, really dark, like, really super dark navy, dark blues. Uh, these are kind of almost black, but not quite black. Got the gunmetal and, you know, all that stuff. He's got his hand right here. He's actually his hand there in this version. Um, his face, you can see that. You see on his face there, he does actually have the little Predacon symbol on his forehead, and he's you know got the purple face. He's got that grimace. Apparently, there's some versions out there with have his um, him bearing teeth, so unpainted teeth, but still bearing teeth. So uh, there is a variant out there. I think that people are supposing that might be for the um, what was his name, T Rex. Yeah, the weird um, that weird repaint that came out a while ago. Apparently, they're doing a new, new version. So there you go. Um, yeah, you can see he's got that weird asymmetrical arms. And whatnot. Um, there are no hidden hands on this side. At least that might be a hand, right there. Molds come kind of molded in, although it might just be grooving. I don't think so. No, that's just the thing. Never mind. Duh. <laughs> yeah, there's no hidden hands, no uh, swappable parts or anything. It's not a masterpiece, not quite. <laughs> but yeah, he's um, yeah, he's got the backpack, which again, kind of accurate, but um, kind of on a larger scale because he can't do the magic cheating of just shrink the backpack down. And they don't want to add a billion panels and make it really expensive. So there you go. But yeah. Um, backpack can be kind of weird sometimes. But yeah, it, it works. His, also, his lower leg can be a little odd just because the shape, their dinosaur shape. So you kind of can sometimes have to do a little finagling to get him to stand up straight. But you can do it, as, I, as you can see. But he does look good here. Um he doesn't really come with a lot of accessories, really. He doesn't have anything come with anything to hold, but he clearly has a 5 millimeter peg hole right there in his hand. But, and that's not. not. Um, thing is, of course, he does have some uh, hollowness. If you that upsets you, you know, there's some hollowness in the thighs, but actually not a whole lot anywhere else well, on the back of his arm, really. You can see that. Yeah, there's some hollowness in the back of his arm. But other than that, he doesn't really have a whole lot of, like, hollow bits to, uh, I guess, get upset over. Um, yeah. Of course... He just looks pretty good. 
I think he looks pretty close to the cart old cartoon. Not perfect, but close. His head, his articulation, those head is on a ball joint, I believe. So left and right, you got up and down. So I think, yeah, it's on a ball joint, but you can't really do a lot of uh, or really any um, side like waggle. But you can look up and down a bit and side to side. His shoulders. This one can go forward and back. Um, there's an outward there. There's a bicep swivel, elbow. Um, you got this uh, claw thing. Got this, can move, I guess, and rotate if you need that to for whatever reason. On this shoulder, this shoulder can actually, because of the neck joint, can actually move forward and back. So you got a butterfly joint on one side, not on this side, though. Wish they kind of just, even though, I was just kind of wish they had one on this side, too. Uh, but still has outward and everything, and then the rotation. And the elbow is like this, so... Um, yeah, on this arm, so you have to kind of bend it so the head's upside down, unfortunately. There's no real way to change that. Because, yeah, on this side, well, you kind of got it backwards. It kind of works. It just kind of looks starts looking weird, but you can kind of do it. But, yeah, just... So, the circulation in this arm's a little weird. And, of course, the dinosaur head can open and you can shoot people with it, I guess. The uh, waist can rotate just fine. Pretty um, free there, despite the backpack and everything. It has a, it's not really hindered by that. Hips forward and back, outward. Unfortunately, are stopped by uh, sculpting. If you move that out of the way, though, yeah, you got a lot more. Got a bit more actually if you move that out of the way, but yeah. Uh, there's no thigh swivel up here. There is a knee swivel though. You can see that. There's a knee swivel right here. Now you can see it. Uh, there's a knee, which I guess 90 degrees. It's kind of hard to tell sometimes because of the curvature of the chin. And again, same as the dinosaur as well, just uh, forward and back on the foot as well as uh, ankle tilt. Although the ankle tilt's a little weird. It feels like it's going to break every single time I use it because there's so much resistance. So just an FYI on that one. And now for some comparisons. Here he is again with the um, Kingdom Primal. You can quite the height gap, but that's kind of actually more or less correct. You can see that. Here he is with the original Beast Wars Megatron. Oops. See that? Again, more or less the same height, really. Pretty close, anyway. Uh, he's a little shorter, but, you know, but way less accurate. These hips are weird right now. There we go. There you go. Completion's sake, here he is with um, Earthrise Optimus Prime. You see, again, height difference. Yeah, Mega Beast Wars Megatron's big. I mean, granted, Beast Wars guys in this line are not really in scale with the Autobots and Decepticons, but hey. But, yeah. And I guess just for the sake of it as well, um, here he is with the, uh, well, G2 Megatron. So that's Earthrise, repaint of Earthrise Megatron. Again, height difference. So, Beast Wars Megatron here from Kingdom. Um, is he worth getting? Hmm. His, his beast mode's kind of... Mm, yeah, the problem is there. There's this rubbery plastic and stuff kind of... And a lot of panel gaps kind of add to a kind of an iffy-looking um, beast mode, unfortunately, which kind of stinks. Uh, his robot mode is really solid. I mean, if you like Beast Wars Megatron's robot mode, he's, well, a very good representation of it. And it looks really good. And, you know, he's got some decent posability, some, you know, limitations just because of his design, but... It's kind of be you kind of expect that with uh, Beast Wars Megatron. His transformation is mostly pretty straightforward and whatnot. There's a couple little annoying pieces just because of um, how it's designed. Um, mostly going to the Beast mode where the problems come in because you're just trying to get everything to all tab together properly without popping apart. I would almost say this is only really for the guy people who really just like Beast Wars, like me. If you really liked Beast Wars growing up, then yeah, this is a good. I think this might be a good purchase. But if you're looking for, I guess, Kingdom to win you over to Beast Wars, this probably isn't going to, well, do it. 
It's unfortunate. Uh, he is, yeah, leader class, so he is fifty dollars. And for a lot of people that um, they look at the alt mode, like, yeah, go, yeah, he's not worth fifty dollars. But I don't know. It really depends. He's got a good robot mode, but it really depends on if you're okay with the whole weird arm thing that um, Beast Wars Megatron does and whatnot. Um, yeah, transformation's all right, but yeah, he's um, pretty good size. You know, he's got a good um, weight to him. So I think he's worth $50, but again, only to the really the Beast Wars diehards like me, I guess. You know, those of us who really like Beast Wars stuff. Anyone, I think anyone who's pretty much just in here for, here for G1 are going to be a bit disappointed with this guy. And um, this is, not, again, not going to change their mind. So it really depends on where your priorities are. Um, maybe you should just go ahead and wait for Galvatron. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know. Maybe I know they're doing this mold apparently at least two, at least one more time, possibly two more times, depending on if the leak's accurate or not. Because there's the, um, what is it? I can't remember what they called those guys. The, the, there was a repaint. There's a red dinosaur repaint. I think it was T-Rex. Yeah, like two X's at the end or whatever because trademarks <laughs> and whatnot or whatever, something like that. It was 90s. Yeah, they always have repaint of this guy who's like all red and who they're, they're, doing, they're doing like Generation Select of or something like that. And apparently, supposedly, they're going to be doing a Jurassic Park crossover toy and it's going to use this mold. So you might like it better in different colors. I don't know. You might want to wait for those. It depends on a lot of things, although the Jurassic Park version will definitely be more expensive just because licensing... So anyway, yeah, I, I think only for Beast Wars diehards on this one. But uh, anyway, that's it. I hope you found this informative, entertaining. I hope you like, comment, subscribe, and check out my Patreon. Check out my Twitter. I'm at uh, Nemesis Prime One. Photos are posted there for them somewhat frequently. And check out the coffee. And I see you see you next time with another video review. 